you're basically, it seems to say, I'm asking permission to do something other than what the court has just ordered me to do. And so if that's what it is, then no, you cannot do that. If you need clarification of a ruling, then of course you can ask that. And if you want reconsideration, then you can ask for that, but that does not need to go on in front of the jury. When I make a ruling, obey the ruling and move on. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You represented at the bench that none of this, that being the writing on the right side of the picture, which we're all squinting at because it's tiny on the piece of paper. And so I am relying upon you to actually be honest with the court and opposing counsel so that we can deal appropriately with the evidentiary issue. Was any of it being offered for the truth? And you said no. And then you turned around and after it was admitted over the overruling of the hearsay objection, based on the representation that nothing was being offered for its truth, you drew the witness's attention to the phone number and tried to have the witness testify to whose phone number it was. If that is not offered for the truth, what is it? Your Honor, it what explains it? what he next, what steps he next took. It wasn't that he sat there and took this phone number and said, okay, this is Justin Cobb's phone number. He went and sought records based on what he saw on the social media post. So it's not, this post can't prove anything, but I do expect that the witness will testify based right. on what he saw, regardless, because it's a legitimate. Why can't you just add the bench when you know that the reason you're offering it is for the phone number and then to ask the witness other questions about what he did based on that phone number and seeing that phone number say to everybody so that we know what we're dealing with, you know, it's this phone number and then I'm going to ask him X, Y, Z about the phone number and then we'll know what we're dealing with. But when he saw this on Justin Cobb's page or a picture of Justin Cobb next to what he believed to be Justin Cobb's handle. He sought additional information. The entire cross- Is the phone number one of the comments? I'm sorry, what, Your Honor? I mean, that that is included within what you're now calling comments, all of them just being- And I asked at the bench, which, what comments they were asserting was hearsay, Your Honor. I I literally asked- And I asked at the bench, is any of this being offered for its truth? And Your Honor, it's being offered to explain DDA Sprinkles, actions that he took. I think um, a mistrial is appropriate. I'm asking I mean, I can't one. figure out what it is. If it's disingenuous, if it is that, I mean, I don't, I don't want to malign the prosecutor standing in front of me right now. So I'm not going to say the possible things that it could be, but it is baffling to me that somebody with the number of years of experience that you have time after time after time continues to seemingly Uh purposefully hide the ball to the extent you possibly can for as long as you possibly can. And I really don't want to believe that it is purposeful, but honestly, after a certain number of times, you start to wonder how it could be anything but that, unless it is just that you are so unorganized that you are throwing this case together as you try it. And I am sorry to say that, but Look at Ms. This case <laughs> is being made much more difficult for everybody because of the haphazard ha- way in which it is being presented. I'm, I'm going to take a recess for a few minutes. <laughs> All right, Mr. Sharp. I agree. Your Honor, this is what just happened was completely dishonest, disingenuous, misleading, and gross. And, you and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't, and I objected, and I wouldn't have even thought about uh, anyone doing this other than the fact that I've seen the prior behavior throughout this trial of this type of nonsense where we try to trick a witness and to think we're saying they meaning two, three people and then mm-hmm. try to convince the jury that we're somehow including my client Shannon when it's clear that my client, I mean, excuse me, the witness does not, is not following. That's what we're talking about. Okay. And it's disgusting. And I don't know how we cure it. But it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move for a mistrial. I think it was completely intentional. Obviously, it was calculated. Obviously, when I asked for clarification, I would think anyone seeking the truth would gladly clarify. I'm seeking the truth. I would gladly clarify. No, it's sheepish grin and then. All right. I understand your objection. And I understand what you were saying past that objection. Mm-hmm. Miss Love. I think one thing that, no, No. you need to listen. I think that one thing 
that needs to happen is when an objection is made and you are given an opportunity to respond and I make a ruling, even if that ruling is please clarify, that you then need to obey what my order is instead of continuing to argue. Yes, Your Honor. If, if the state is not allowed to ask for a clarification or consideration, I, I understand. I don't know what you mean by that. Your Honor, when I ask... A clarification of my ruling? Is that what you mean? When I ask for permission beyond what the court has instructed, Move I did not know that I should not do that, so I won't do that anymore. That's not what was going on. Uh-oh. You're basically, it seems to say, I'm asking permission to do something other than what the court has just ordered me to do. And so if that's what it is, then no, you cannot do that. If you need clarification of a ruling, then of course you can ask that. And if you yeah. want reconsideration, then you can ask for that, but that does not need to go on in front of the jury. When I make a ruling, obey the ruling and move on. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh oh. I can't remember who just stood up and raised it, but whomever said that yesterday you said it was inadvertent and this morning you're saying there was a decision made not to share this information with the defense because uh -oh. Mr. Boyer had not yet been arrested and APD was contemplating whether to secure a warrant and I didn't want to alert him. Uh, so which is it? Thank you. They are both. I asked the court yesterday mm -hmm. to allow me the time to speak with team members. Right. And the information. Don't lie to the judge. Is that when the phone records were initially secured. In the fall of 2023. Yes, when the, yes. Okay. When they were initially secured, the thought process was we're going to get this person arrested and indicted. Okay. As time went on, the our team had the records and as we advanced in trial. So what happened on that date? She of the said, oh, good shoot, question. We get it Ooh. yesterday and we don't get it. Really. Oh, this good. is new stuff. Let's good question. That was, so we are one team, but we have many members and parts, but I will get Dang. the date. But I can tell you that when I said that it, there was the realization um, that we do need to turn it over. Yeah. When when did that realization occur? That's I, I will find out because it was not mine. It was not my realization. Okay, I'll did, find out. What I'm saying is, it was Fanny. Who's in charge of the team? Who's in charge of the team? We are. I am. And so before okay. it's mine, <laughs> generally speaking, I'm saying that in terms of a date certain, there was communication internally. We we looked at it. We were looking at everything we had to turn over. And we were looking at anything that we haven't turned over. Just Whitaker's about to pop off realized, first thing in the morning. Oh, my goodness. This has not been done. All right. And you don't know what date that happened? No, that hap that's what led to turning it over. On Monday. Um, Like, yes, this weekend we were talking about it and we turned it over. All right. So sometime over the weekend is when the realization occurred. Oh, my gosh, we haven't. You knew you hadn't turned it over. Oh, my gosh, we need to turn this over. Oh my gosh, it has not been turned over and we need to turn it over. Okay. And, and you're getting us the information about when the, well, I mean, when we get the affidavit in support of the search warrant for I the agree, cell no, records, sorry. we'll know the date that that occurred. That is correct. Uh huh. We're working on that. And, and it did not occur to anybody at that point in time that this is information to be shared with the defense. When the court says at that point in time, you mean with the affidavit for I'm, the search warrant? When the search warrant for the records were obtained? Yes. Uh, right? I mean, obviously not, since no, you got not. them in the fall of 2023. Before you step to the door, is there go. at this stage, which is mid-trial, any else, whether Brady or not, 
that you think might oh. be relevant to either the state or the defense in trying this case that you, the state, know of that the defense still does not know of? And you may want to huddle with whomever. Oh, come com on, man. Comprises your team. And y'all all put heads together and really, really, really think about that. And then get me an answer after lunch. Okay. Yes. Can you do that? Your Honor. Yes. Given what has already been said and what we believe will come out, we believe that it is not in any way a waste of time to show the jury certain things that this witness said about Monk Tung and the last time that he talked to him. And in order for us to um, allow them to be able to consider certain things, substantive evidence, they have to hear what he said and I have to confront him with it. This is not even what we talked about on the break, but sustained. Your Honor, on, um, may I ask what it is that I should not do in terms of. If you want to come up here to the bench, you can. Okay. <laughs> Objection for like Weinstein said. Sustained. I'll do. Your Honor, may I ask? No. I mean, I don't know. You may ask a different question. <laughs> After you promised Detective Gaither she you said, weren't nope. there, did you ask Detective Gaither and Dennis if they wanted to talk about? some other cases. Oh, no. okay. Now, did you believe you needed to talk about your case before you got to the other cases? What? Stand. What is she even asking? Would Detective Dennis and Gaither talk to you about any other cases before talking to you about yours? Okay. And Your Honor, if there's a relevance objection, I do have a response. If I need to go to the bench, I will. I guess you're going to need to come to the bench. Was your lawyer, was the lawyer for your friend, Mr. Kendrick, here in court with you on December 28th, well, 2022? You can answer first, and I will let you explain, but I, I need you to answer no, yes or no. But could you stop yelling at me like I'm your child if I'm not your child? You are not. You're talking aggressive to me. You don't intimidate me, all them guys over here. So if you would have came to me and ask me that I'd have told you the same thing, what if they was in my face or not in my face? I'm not scared of them, are you? I don't want you to be. Well, that's what you acting like. It. That's okay. what you acting like you're trying to pay. So do you want me to bring my voice down? And I apologize yeah, yeah, don't if this sounds me, like I ain't your child. And, and basically, Nichols trying to get help for himself. Like, he need, bro needs to pay for a lawyer. We did it for him. We don't believe. Hey, no, no, sir, Mr. Harvey, stop right now. Stop right now. Stop right now. Mr. Harvey, Mr. Harvey, sit down. I am not going to have you interrupt court. You may object in just a moment. Ooh. We will get to your objection in a moment. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. There has been no showing that this information is so Harvey's substantially <laughs> more prejudicial than probative that it should permit the exclusion of what we believe is obviously relevant evidence. Okay, thank you. Mr. Harvey, your objection. Dang! Bruce Harvey said that's enough. Making things up for the court and saying speculative things to the court that are true, like he paid for Mr. Nichols' lawyer. You got the evidence of that? I don't even understand that to be what she said. Okay, well, the record will reflect what she said, but I understood her to be talking about what was being said within the context of this conversation we just listened to. Your, Your Honor, just yes, oh, sir. Uh, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Harvey. Yeah, he was not feeling that one. So, so well, well is the person to whom this allegedly... I'm, I'm going to listen to it again. It, Offline. Dang, Bruce. Not in court. It, Your Honor, this is where I'm at with this. Just because the state says something is so doesn't make it.
so. I understand. And exactly. The state is saying, oh, well, this was done in furtherance of the conspiracy. This was done in furtherance of the conspiracy. The, the whole point of the hearsay rules, and I understand that the uh, confrontation clause might not be implicated here, but the hearsay rules, the whole point of the hearsay rules is you get to see who's saying it, know what their basis is. You get to cross-examine them. They come to court, et cetera. And, and the problem here is the state can ju is just sitting here saying, oh, well, clearly Mr. Uh, Umfunk did this to further the conspiracy. And mm -hmm. How do we know? How does she know? Maybe, we don't. Maybe Umfunk, I'm not saying this is the case, but what if Umfunk was involved? <clears throat> Umfunk would have every reason to, to shift responsibility to other people. What about the next line in the in, in the hearsay ladder that we have? We don't know what people's motivations are. And and just because the state says, well, their motivation was to do this or do that, she's not inside Unfunk's head. Exactly. He's exactly she's not right. Inside Rel's head. So I, I reject that their argument that they can just label things as hearsay exceptions and it makes it so. Well, I I understand that I, I, I take what everybody says as your argument in support of your position. I don't accept it as fact. Can it's Mr. Christian easy. work on getting that information? We're, it's already being worked on. I already did okay. that request. I mean, will the answer differ based on when you asked for the information as to why at the time you asked for the information, no matter when that was, you did not, even though you could have, Say too, to Grammy. the Me defense too. attorneys, I'm going to be getting this. I don't know if I'm going to use it or not, but I'm going to be getting it. That is um, the best practice. And we did not, but we, I don't have um, as, as a good answer. Mm. I mean, and the answer could be because, man, there are only 24 hours in the day and this is chaos and, you know, we're doing the best we can. That could be your answer. I don't know. It's still not a good answer, yeah, we know. but it's embarrassing. Let, let me, let's just maybe nip this in the bud. Cause I did ask you also to at the lunch break huddle with your team and see if there might potentially be anything else outstanding, whether Brady or not. Cause none of this sounds like Brady. It's just information that might come in in trial that it would be, you know, just kind of like the way we're supposed to track cases is to sort of share each other's evidence to, you know, with the other side so they know what to expect. State of Georgia versus Jeffrey Williams, a.k.a. Young Thug, a.k.a. Brian Steele. Additional motion to disqualify lawyers Love and Hilton. Seems like it's a closed case at this point, right? Comes now Young Thug by and through undersigned counsel and hereby files this additional motion to disqualify lawyers Love and Hilton in the above reference case in support of this motion. Young Thug shows his falls. We know he's got to say he's guilty. He's innocent. <laughs> Young Thug is innocent of all crimes in the above reference indictment. The Honorable Court denied Young Thug's original motion to disqualify lawyers Love and Hilton on August 1st, 2024, this last week, based upon Young Thug's assertion that he intends to call lawyers Love and Hilton as a witness at trial, amongst so many other things. Young Thug respectfully requests this honorable court to consider the ethical violations made by lawyers Love and Hilton in support of this motion to disqualify. We heard Miss Love bring up Ford versus Young, and she said, uh, I see what you're saying about Ford, but it doesn't really apply here because the circumstances were different. Uh, we don't care. Y'all got to go. The Enorm the the enormity, excuse me, I have not seen that spelled out. The enormity of violations of candor with the court. Sound familiar? Candor with the counsel and the denial of ethical prosecutors on this case are too much to permit lawyers Love and Hilton to continue as lawyers in this litigation. Below is just a touch of the constant. <laughs> Misconduct by lawyers Love and Hilton in this case. Boy, the timing of this is ironic. Recently, lawyer Love filed a motion with this honorable court that undersigned counsel had a duty to provide work product. Uh oh. Lawyer Love knows that the same. I'm sorry. Lawyer Love knows that same is untrue and the cases that she cited 
in that she cited in said motion did not support the propositions of law that she asserted in the motion. See the motion to compel defendants compliance with reciprocal discovery obligations and to exclude any evidence intentionally withheld and not timely disclosed filed on July 26, 2024. This is not the first time they've done this. This was the fourth time that lawyer love raised the same frivolous issue, attempting to hide Georgia law from the court that she was explained at the three prior hearings on the same exact issue. See the YouTube dated April 8th, 2024, and then July 30th, 2024 as well. And we won't watch those right now, but this is, this is sad to see y'all. In paragraph 11 of the state's ex parte motion for the order to compel testimony necessary to the public interest, there is zero truth to the assertion that any defense meeting occurred with Lil Woody to impact Lil Woody's decision to invoke this Fifth Amendment or any other matter. No defense lawyer on this trial had any connection or involvement with Lil Woody on or around June 6th. This is a known misstatement by Lawyer Love. Prior to opening statements, the former court ordered all parties to share with each other a demonstrative, I'm sorry, any demonstrative aids that they would seek to display on the jury opening on, uh, excuse me, let me read this again, y'all. Prior to opening statements, the former court ordered all parties with each other Prior to opening statements, the former court ordered all parties to share with each other any demonstrative aids that they would seek to display to the jury during opening statements that were to begin on Monday, November 27, 2023. This order came from Glanville. So they've had this order long time, long time ago. So that objects so that objections could be made prior to the presentation of the opening statement. And we saw Yesterday, Judge Whitaker basically spending her time doing the same, the same thing. She's planning on bringing the jury back on Monday. She wanted to go ahead and go through any evidence that they had to make sure there weren't any issues brought up while the jury was in and we had a witness on the stand because she doesn't want to do all the back and forth and have to get the jury out of there, have to bring them back, get them out of there, bring them back and going back and forth. So. To avoid all of that, she's kind of following the same guidelines. As we saw when this trial initially continued, Judge Glanville eventually, I don't know if he just got tired or what, but he let this keep happening and keep happening and keep happening instead of taking a pause and making sure they had everything ready to go once the jury was there. So then what happened was on Friday, November 24th, 2023 at 4.58 p.m., Lawyer Love shared her supposed, her supposed demonstrative aid. During opening statements at trial, Lawyer Love showed a completely different demonstrative aid in violation of the prior court's order. 